on the one hand, I want to show you guys the reality of what's going on here. On the other hand, I, I just don't want to put my camera in people's faces during the worst day of their lives, you know? I know what you think. You think this is one of those videos. Those videos where a foreign guy visits a developing country and thinks he can save it in its time of need. And then he guilt trips you into donating to some cause that you just found out about. But that's not what this video is about at all. Let me explain. This time of year in Costa Rica, it's the rainy season. It rains almost every single day. So when I woke up in the morning and it was raining, it was no big deal. When it kept raining through the day, no big deal. And even when I went to bed that evening and it was still raining, you know, it was just a rainy day in Costa Rica. But when I woke up the next morning and the rain was still coming down hard, I started to wonder what was up. And it turned out something was up. This was a tropical storm that had been hitting Costa Rica. A tropical storm named Nate. And even though this wasn't a hurricane, uh, Nate brought a significant amount of water to almost all of Costa Rica. Where I live, Manuel Antonio, uh, was no exception. We got dumped on. You can probably see the pool level. It's as high as it can be. Uh, it's risen significantly over the past couple of days. But overall, we survived, you know, we, things could have been a lot worse than they were. But as the rain continued to fall, I started to think about where all that rain was going and how the people in town down below might be doing. So I live in a place called Manuel Antonio, which is up this big hill. That means that all of the water flows down. So we haven't really got flooding where I'm at. I think we've been spared the worst of it. Late Thursday afternoon, the rain started to subside and I went into town, not really knowing what I was expecting. We're on our way, we're about to drive down to Capos, the town, and check out how people are doing. It's right by the water, so there could be some serious damage. There is a national emergency on the whole country right now, so some parts have been hit pretty bad. So far it looks to be okay, for the most part. As you can see, there was some damage and there were some boats that were overturned, but for the most part, the town seemed to be okay and I breathed a sigh of relief. But over the next 24 hours, I would learn again that looks can be deceiving and just because you don't see the water doesn't mean it's not out there. The people who lived a little bit outside of the town were faring much worse than people in the city of Capos. So on the great suggestion of another guy named Peter Sear, um, I donated some old clothing. To those of you who know my story, I moved to Costa Rica when my uncle died. 
uh, my uncle who lived down here for 25 years, was practically local. I mean, everyone knew him down here. Um, he passed away suddenly and I, I came to look at, after the property while we, while we sort things out. But long story short, my uncle had some extra clothing and we decided there was no better use for them than to donate to his community uh, in its time of need. So we went down to the fire station, uh, which had been turned into sort of a makeshift uh, shelter. And um, there were, there was a big pile of bananas. There were tons of clothes. There were, there was water, there was food. It was, it was great to see. Um, and we, me and my girlfriend, we, we dropped these bags and they said they needed help folding. So we stayed there for about an hour. Uh, and we folded it, we organized clothes. But you know what? I quickly learned that Capos didn't have it nearly as bad as Perita, which is another town that was 30 minutes to the north. It's now Sunday. This is my day off, and there have been a couple of days of mostly sun since the rain has happened. So I don't know exactly what it's going to be like out there. I don't know if they need help. I don't know if they need supplies. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to go down there and see if there's anything that I can do because it just seems like the thing to do. The little town we just passed, uh, pretty much every property had a pile of destroyed possessions on the corner, mattresses, bookshelves just broken and flooded and wrecked. Uh, I don't know, man. On the one hand, I want to show you guys the reality of what's going on here. On the other hand, I, I just don't want to put my camera in people's faces during the worst day of their lives, you know? These people have very little and they, they've, they've lost the little that they have and it's tough. It's tough to see and I, I can't imagine what it's what it's like to live through. We're getting closer to Perita, uh, the town that was hit pretty bad. I just want to show you guys um, the storm ended Thursday. It's now Sunday and this is how much water there still is. I'm pretty sure by looking at this, I mean, this whole road was probably flooded over. You can see that telephone pole in front of me is just, just barely standing. This behind me, this is a kid's school. It's Sunday, so there's nobody here. Over there, you can see some properties that were quite affected as well. Parita is the town that we're going to. I just had to stop now because the highway is starting to get pretty intense. That, my friends, is a serious pothole. There were actually about 20 different highways that were completely closed off because of mudslides. Uh, a lot of them a lot worse than that. I'm talking the whole width of both lanes knocked out. Um, and the construction crews in this country have worked heroically and repaired some incredible damage within 24 hours, including one highway around here. So this is what the highway looked like after the flood. And this is how they got it looking in less than 24 hours. So shout out to the construction teams around, uh, around Costa Rica. So, uh, first off, as you can see, it started to rain again. 
Uh, I, I drove through some of the streets of Parita. I saw more like I did near Capos, um, where every house just kind of has a pile of their belongings by the curb. I, I think in my heart that it's not the right thing to do to just kind of like go in there and act like I can be a hero and just kind of help them. I don't really speak Spanish, so maybe I would just be more trouble than I'm worth, you know? I don't want to just assume that I'm some foreigner so I can come in and like save the day or whatever. I want to I wanna help in a productive way. So I just had lunch and I asked them through Google Translate if there's anywhere that I could help with the flood and they, they recommended the, the Rujo Cruz, Rujo Cruz, Rujo Cruz. Um, <laughs> the Red Cross is what I eventually found out they were saying. Okay. So they just told me that I need to go to another Red Cross uh, that's 10 minutes that way. Maybe things are worse out there when you get out, out into the, uh, the countryside a bit. Okay, keep your eyes open for Cruz Roja, Red Cross. That is what we're looking for. Okay, I found it. Uh, this one's actually huge. This one's a lot bigger than the other one, so... <sighs> Let's go check it out. So I spoke to the one guy who spoke English and he said that they still need donations, they still need water, rice, beans, uh, you know, f food and water, the essentials. Okay, he told me to drive back here. Man, this storm is coming back. It's the rainy season, so it's like this pretty much every afternoon. Gave the donations to the guys in the back. Um, you know, I've heard people say that they don't support charities like the Red Cross, big charities. That it's better to give local to smaller charities. Um, I understand that perspective. You don't want big companies, or not companies, big, big, big organizations where all the money goes to structuring the organizations and not the aid that it's supposed to go to. But in a crisis like this, it's clear interacting with these guys that they are, they are locals. Like this is, these are Costa Ricans who are scrambling and working hard to, to help their fellow countrymen and women and children and. I just hope those supplies go somewhere good. So what's the real point of this video? Is it to say, hey look at me, look at what a good boy Dan's been donating to the Red Cross? No. Is it to get you guys to donate to Costa Rica? No. Costa Rica is actually pretty well off in terms of Latin American countries. So why am I making this video? What message am I trying to get across? Well, if I can leave you guys with only one message, it would be this. I live on top of a hill. And when the storm came, my first thoughts were about my own property. You know, it makes sense. We're all inherently selfish, aren't we? Or at least we, we look out for our own interests and our family's interests and our friends' interests first. It's human nature. That's nothing to be ashamed of. But after that, once I realized that things were okay where we were, I started to wonder 
about all that water going down the hill and what it was like for people down below by sea level. And it would have been easier not to ask that question and sometimes we like not to ask these questions because it makes it easier to keep peace of mind, right? There's because there's always a tragedy. There's, a, there's always like check the news. There's always there's always a tragedy. There's always someone who needs something, right? But this this was different. This was my own community. This was the country that had accepted me as a foreigner and accepted my uncle 25 years ago and and this was the country that he loved. So I couldn't just avoid that hard question and I couldn't just sit on my, my hill and do nothing. So I guess the point of the video is this. I encourage you guys to to look at your own communities and think about the hill that you might be on top of. It's probably not a physical hill. It might be an economic hill. It might be a social hill. It might be a class-based hill, racial hill. You know, it could be anything that prevents you from seeing and understanding a reality that other people are faced with. Uh, in this time, it was a very physical reality. It was the flooding in their living rooms. It was, you know, the water that was changing their ability to, to survive. Once again, this isn't about look at me, how, look how great I am. Not at all. This is just something that's left a profound impact on me. I think it's made me a more empathetic person and I think it's given me a new way of looking at community and how I can give back to my own communities wherever I go, wherever I travel to. Because communities that we travel through or that we live in for only a few months are every bit as much our community as the ones back home. We're human beings after all, aren't we? If we want to be welcomed in other countries, we need to welcome them back. That's it. That's my message. I'm sure some of you will think that's kind of corny, feel good, nonsense. But you know what? If even one person at home takes this message to heart and thinks about their own communities and what good they can do and acts upon that, uh, this video will be worth it for me. So yeah, that's it. As always, I'm Dan from The New Travel. See you next time. I'm not just taking for tip beneath